Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll see how to use Hibernate provided timestamp annotations to automatically populate the values for dates. So you can see here in our product JP entity, we have a date created and last updated fields, right? And each time we create a product object, we have to specify the values for these fields, right? Well, tracking the date created and last updated database record is a common requirement, right? So instead of manually specifying the values for these fields, we can use Hibernate provided timestamp uh, timestamp annotation to automatically assign values for these fields. All right. So let me show you how we can do that. So let's go and let's use the Hibernate provided annotation that is at, you know, creation timestamp annotation so make sure that you choose creation timestamp annotation from hibernate package okay that is org.hibernate.annotations so this annotation will basically automatically populate the value for this field okay so this annotation will basically get the current time from the jvm and then it will assign to this field all right next let's go and let's use at update you know timestamp annotation from org.hibernate.annotations package to automatically provide a, you know the timestamp value for this field well once we add hibernate provided timestamp annotations to these fields in a jp entity then hibernate will basically take care of the necessary updates we don't have to manually add or you know track the values for these fields hibernate will automatically take care of updating these values for us okay so these are the useful annotations we can simply use to just you know let hibernate to manage the values for these fields all right great now let's quickly run our spring boot application and let's verify these changes will work as expected so let me run the spring boot application And you can see there are no exceptions or the errors it means whatever the changes we have done it is working as expected all right great I will see you in next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we'll see how to use Lombok library to reduce a boilerplate code well Lombok library is basically a popular Java library that helps us to reduce a boilerplate code here boilerplate code meaning a getter setter methods constructor to string method equals method okay for example consider a product jp entity here and we have created a lot of getter setter methods right and look at here the lines of code okay we have created these lines of code to just generate a getter setter methods all right and let's say if we have you know too many jp entities for example in our e-commerce project we can create a product jp entity product category order order item okay user roles address right so if we create these jp entities then obviously we need to create a getter setter methods to access the private fields right and sometimes we need to create a constructors we need to create you know equals and hash code methods to string methods right so this is basically a boilerplate code we need to create this kind of code uh, repeatedly right in order to reduce this kind of boilerplate code we can use a lombok library well, basically Lombok is a Java library which will help us to you know, reduce this kind of boilerplate code and you can see it provides a lot of annotations. Okay, for example, look at here at getter at setter annotations. So we can use these annotations to automatically generate a getters and setters for the private fields and add to string annotation we can use to generate a to string method for the class and equals and hash code and these are the couple of annotation to generate no argument constructor required argument constructor and all argument constructor and if you if you want to have a builder pattern for your class you can use at builder annotation all right so let's go ahead and let's see how to use lombok library in our spring boot application and let's see how to reduce the boilerplate code well first of all let's get the lombok dependency so in order to get the lombok dependency from the internet so i am going to head over to the start.spring.io so this will head over to the spring initializer 
and go to add dependencies and here just search for Lombok okay and just choose the Lombok dependency so this is basically Java annotation library which helps to reduce a boilerplate code and go ahead and click on explore and you can simply copy this Lombok dependency okay and let's head over to the IntelliJ idea and go to pom.xml and just go here and just paste it so as soon as you paste this dependency you will get an icon here okay so go ahead and click on this icon to load Marvin changes all right now we have added Lombok library to our Spring Boot application and we are good to use Lombok annotations so go back to product JP entity and here we are going to simply remove getters and setters all right and just go ahead and annotate this class with at getter annotation and at setter annotation and if you want to use no argument constructor or all argument constructor then you can go ahead and use annotations like no argument constructor meaning a default constructor and all argument constructor meaning a parameterized constructor okay great now we have used a lombok annotation to reduce the boilerplate code so going forward whenever we create a jp entities we will be using lombok annotation to reduce a boilerplate code for example get a setter methods constructors two string methods okay well now let's go and let's run our spring boot application and let's see these changes will work as expected so i'm going to run the spring boot application And look at here there are no errors or exceptions in the console it means that we have successfully used a lombok library in our spring boot application all right great i will see you in next lecture